Hi, Dr. Peter Stapleton here. I'm a clinical and health registered psychologist here in Queensland, Australia, and an associate professor in the School of Psychology at Bond University. Mostly what I'm known for is my research in the area of EFT, uh, or emotional freedom techniques, often called tapping, because it describes the actual technique of stimulating pressure points with a cognitive statement um, while we actually work on different issues. Sometimes we refer to it as a form of psychological acupuncture, um, but it's most definitely a stress reduction tool. So I research this area quite commonly and I'm quite known uh, worldwide for that. But this research spotlight series is really just to take some of the research that's out there and let you know what it means in easy to understand kind of layman terms. That way you can share it in any circles that might be useful um, in your own world and certainly um, share with anyone that you think might be interested. Today's topic is to talk about some of the research that's emerging in the area of tapping EFT for pain, particularly chronic pain. This is an area that has been looked at in different trials uh, at maybe a subset level. So perhaps, you know, a trial that might have been done on food and weight issues may also have looked at what the pain reduction was. But today I just want to talk about the main studies that have been done solely in the pain space. Now there aren't that many to date, um, but it is an emerging field and it is something that my team here in Australia want to contribute to over the next uh, couple of years as well. So if I start by just talking about the area of fibromyalgia, which is a chronic pain condition um, that involves a lot of tenderness and soreness of uh, different points on the body, but certainly at a muscular and joint level as well. And it's quite common. So three to 6% of the world's population uh, do meet criteria for fibromyalgia. And there has been two EFT studies that have been done in this area. One uniquely was actually done in the online space, which is where I want to start, because it's quite interesting when we start to have a look at the delivery of EFT or tapping in the online space, it actually is quite effective. So in this first study, and the links to the actual publications are below, so you can actually go off and read the whole paper if you want to. But if I just summarise for you what happened. So in this online trial, there were 86 women who particularly met the criteria that they were looking for, obviously of fibromyalgia as a diagnosis, and they were randomly allocated either to the EFT tapping intervention or a wait list. Now wait list groups typically do get the treatment after the period of the intervention, or sometimes they're just used as a control group to see whether or not uh, that intervention actually doing nothing does any, anything to your symptoms. So like I said, it was an eight-week online program. So participants self-paced through that, but the study leader actually stayed in contact with them. So once a week, they filled out their rating scales, their distress and pain rating scales, and they emailed those through to the person that was leading the study. If they didn't do that, they were then followed up, obviously, with a phone call and they had consented to all that kind of thing. So what they found over the eight weeks of the program was that the general pain reduction out of a SUDS rating, a subjective unit of distress rating out of 10, dropped from 7 out of 10, so that's where it was in the beginning, to 5 out of 10. For the intervention group only, the wait list didn't have any change whatsoever in their pain levels and ratings. As far as the measurements that were taken, like the significant level of pain, um, things like catastrophizing thoughts, so it's where uh, part of your thoughts might include ruminating or catastrophizing, making something bigger than what it actually is. Those types of things were measured as well as anxiety and depression symptoms. And there was a significant reduction in all of those. So the level of pain, catastrophizing thoughts, anxiety symptoms and depression symptoms for that wait list. So over that eight weeks, they certainly saw that outcome. And people were reporting that they actually had a benefit from that. But again, the wait list didn't have any change. So it was a starting point, if you like, and definitely that online delivery, whilst that can be difficult, certainly did show that it might actually work for patients who might find it difficult with a condition like fibromyalgia to actually get out and go and seek support or certainly therapy. Um, and obviously that involves, you know, transport and things like that. So for conditions like this, it might be that we need to look at these types of things in the future. 
So there has actually been a second study done on fibromyalgia. It was a much smaller sample size. So it was only six women who actually met criteria. But again, they were actually allocated into either into the intervention or the wait list and then received that afterwards. But all six women actually met criteria of some sort of emotional trauma in their life. So they either had physical abuse, emotional abuse, um, the death of somebody that was close to them, but something that constituted emotional trauma uh, every single one of them actually met that and they actually showed over their intervention which actually was a four session program so they all in, they were all able to access their intervention EFT over four sessions with individual practitioners that it, it all impacted their pain levels so they all reported at the end um, that they did have a significant reduction at what we call a clinical client significance level so because the sample size was only six we don't see it at the statistical significance level um, but certainly it's still important to consider the clinical significance what's the client's perspective on that do they think it helped them and they certainly did report that so if I turn now to a study that I have actually run here in Australia um, on pain, we actually delivered a four-hour intervention within our national pain program. So we had uh, been approved and invited to come along and teach within their chronic pain program, EFT. So most of the patients in that are committed to a 12-month pain program, learn a variety of different things, and EFT was one of the techniques that was actually taught within that. So obviously we have some other variables at, at play here that they were learning lots of things about their pain anyway in the program but they did indeed have this four hour intervention where we taught them and we measured uh, their outcomes and six months later went back to see how they were going. So we had 24 adults who met criteria for chronic pain, so beyond three to six months and beyond the body's natural period of healing, they still had chronic pain symptoms. And we taught them EFT. So they learnt it as a large group of 24 for the first hour or so, how to apply it, what it was, how it worked. And then they separated into small groups where every group had an individual facilitator within them. And they then spent a good two to three hours working through individual uh, pain experiences and everyone was able to sort of have some borrowed benefits uh, from that and we have another research spotlight that's on borrowed benefits so you can certainly have a look at how that works in the EFT space. So what we were measuring was what was the severity of the pain that they experienced in their life and what was the impact? How did it impact in day-to-day -day functioning and everyday activities? We looked at their distress ratings, of course. And over the four hours, obviously we got a reduction because it's it's not a very big period of time. And if you've spent four hours tapping, you're, you're obviously going to have an outcome. But we did look, that, look at them six months later. Now, over the course of the treatment, they certainly got a reduction in the severity and impact of pain. I almost wish I had a video camera at the end of the session because people were laughing and high-fiving each other and certainly kind of moving with uh, an amount of ease that they didn't have four hours earlier. So I was standing at the back of the room watching them and just anecdotally, um, that's sort of the experience that we were seeing. They reported around a 36% reduction in their level of distress about their pain a 29% reduction in levels of depression, so feeling depressed, a 42% reduction in anxiety symptoms, and a 38% reduction in stress, um, feelings of stress. Uh, we followed them up, like I said, six months later, and 50%, so around a dozen of them, were still tapping. So in many of our trials, we find people don't continue beyond the intervention period. But for the 50% who were actually doing that, they actually were still reporting those outcomes that they still had the benefit and their reduction in pain was still significantly low at that statistical level. So that was great and we'll follow through on um, some larger pain trials in Australia um, over the next couple of years. Now just as a fourth pain trial that has been done and this one was led by Nick Ortner of the Tapping Solutions some years ago. They had 50 adults who, again, met the criteria for chronic pain, so more than three months of experiencing these symptoms, and they were attending a three-day workshop, uh, so it was particularly designed, obviously, to help them with tapping, and they, again, did a six-month follow-up. So the average pain rating was about an 8 out of 10 of these people when they started their three-day workshop. 
again, the measurements showed that the significant reduction in pain that they had was there after, after the three days. And they had about a 43% reduction uh, in that severity of pain level. They also had a reduction in those catastrophizing thoughts that we mentioned in the first one as well. A, um, one month later and six months later, so they did two follow-up periods, the people in that particular three-day workshop were still reporting a 42% reduction in their pain levels. So again, that had only been a difference of 1% from the actual three days to one and six months later. So again, showing that tapping in the pain space um, may be a really good addition if you do any kind of client work. Obviously, um, changing what it is that we focus on, um, how we tap for pain can be very much individualized and is absolutely recommended. Uh, but at least the research, the preliminary research in this pain space is actually showing that it does help patients and clients and certainly the results are still speaking for themselves at those follow-up periods at least six months later. So I hope that kind of uh, helps you just with the research that is emerging. Um, it's a new area. Uh, hopefully we'll add to that in the next couple of years, like I said. Uh, watch this space for those kind of outcomes, but at least you might be able to share this with people in, in your world and your space, and it might be useful to kind of show clients too that indeed this is a legitimate tool that might actually help them cope. I'm Peter Stapleton. I hope you've enjoyed this and do have a look at some of our other research spotlights.